I've just arrived in Bolivia, one of two landlocked countries in the whole of South America, with a population of over 11 million people that speak over 36 different languages, only one of which is Spanish. Bolivia, 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 you're officially country number 104. Bolivia sits more or less in the center of South America, surrounded by Brazil, Paraguay, Argentina, Chile, and Peru. Its currency is the Boliviano, and it has two capital cities, the official one being Sucre, which lies in the east, and the administrative one being La Paz, sitting in the western highlands at around 3,600 meters, making it the highest capital city in the world. In early 2020, I spent nine days in Bolivia, which is nowhere near enough time for a country so large and diverse. For this trip, my priority was the backpipes, and I split my time between La Paz and Uyuni, home to this incredible train cemetery filled with rusted locomotives imported from the UK in the 20th century. More notably, Uyuni is home to the largest salt flats in the world. Not only is our guide an absolute legend and a historian and biologist, he's making us put on these eye masks so that when we see the salt flats for the first time, it is gonna be like this immense surprise. So we're going under. Oh my oh, they god! <laughs> the Salar de Uni, aka the salt flats of a uni, are absolutely massive. In total, they're over 10,500 square kilometers, which is roughly the size of Jamaica. And during the rainy season, they turn into the world's largest mirror. Sunset on the salt flats is totally out of this world, and it kind of makes you feel like you're at the exact spot where heaven meets earth. Back in La Paz, I had about four days to check out its markets, squares, traffic zebras, and public transport system, the Teleferico, a network of cable cars that connect the city in the most brilliant way. Over the years, the Teleferico has been a game changer for commuters, and for visitors, it's a great way to get a bird's eye view of the city. Right next to La Paz is the city of El Alto, which sits on a 4,000 meter high plateau and hosts Bolivia's infamous Cholitas wrestling. In Bolivia, Cholitas are women with indigenous heritage. The wrestling started as a way for Cholitas, who suffered from domestic abuse, to express their frustration and release stress. Since 2011, the wrestling has been turned into weekly matches and shows that now draw quite the crowd. Aside from cable cars and Cholitas, on my last morning in La Paz, I was able to organize my first and only school visit in Bolivia. I had my first official and only piping gig at a public school in San Pedro Square. Now, the public school itself isn't that well known, but the square is. Because of this prison over here, see that pink building? That is San Pedro Prison. Now, San Pedro Prison was made super well known because over 10 years ago, you used to be able to do these prison tours and actually go into the prison. Anyway, so I turned up yesterday at this school and I asked the director if I could play and she said yes! Just before I go, the music class has invited me in to say a couple of words and they're going to perform very quickly Un canción en Aymara Bolivia truly is a land of history, mystery, and lots of wonderful surprises. Despite being a totally landlocked country, it still maintains a navy in preparation for the day that it reconquers coastline that it lost to Chile in the 19th century. It's also the world's largest producer of Brazil nuts. And 
Most houses in Bolivia have a dried llama fetus placed or built into the foundations. Now this is done as an offering to Pachamama, aka Mother Earth, who plays a very central role in the lives of many Bolivians.